working with new teacher candidates, that's one of the most important things for them to understand is basic human development, child development, human development. And one of the most important theories, I think, is Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. Be and the, I think the reason that's important for teachers to not just be aware of, but to really visit and think about deeply is because if a child doesn't have those basic safety uh, security needs met, they can't move up to those self-actualization needs uh, that we're trying to achieve in a lot of the instruction that we're doing. We just assume that everyone is feeling safe, they're feeling secure, uh, that they have their social needs met and that they're all dialed in on those things. So you just jump right into, well, let's understand the plot of this story or let's uh, try and unpack the implications of this piece of history. When they're just functioning at a, is there going to be somebody home to feed me when I get home? And you might say, well, you know, you need to be, children are resilient and they can get over that. That's a rare child that can't, that can set aside those basic, basic needs and move up the ladder without those needs met. So yeah, I mean, teachers, um, you, you, you work with the children that you're given, of course, that's your professional calling. A teacher can't get inside a kid's head and make sure that every single one of their safety needs is met. Um, and when that's a stress in their life, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to put them where you want them to be in their, their star testing. You know, I mean, they, they can, again, I, I don't want to say, well, then there's nothing we can do. You just have to throw it out unless absolutely everyone has a good social match uh, to the school environment, has a good cultural match, has all of their needs met. We can't work with them. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you need some reality check from time to time to say, listen, let's, let's make sure that what we're expecting of our teachers is reasonable. And we, it is not reasonable to expect that teachers can meet every single need of every child at that basic safety, uh, the lower level of Maslow's hierarchy. I'm sweeping away these test scores because there's something that these test scores didn't tell people about my students. There are so many variables which affect student learning. I would never be able to make a complete list. But I can't bubble in on my student star test. This student never wore their glasses this year. This student didn't know where they were going to be living from one day to the next. This student never took their medication for hyperactivity and attention deficit disorder. This child lacks focus and nothing I could say or do could help them. And this child couldn't make it into special ed because they were low in both mathematics and English language arts. How do varying demographics affect learning and teaching in a classroom? Well, they affect kids' performance on examinations tremendously. As research says there are demographics that, especially on standardized tests, and that's what I'm going to be judged on. There is a certain demographic that does better. I'm not trying to tell you that I don't teach every child. I teach every child with the expectation that they will become proficient. I have small groups. I. But you, here, here, uh, my point is, okay. just talking to you, Okay. the fact that you're arguing like this says you really have the expectation that because they're poor, we know they're not going to achieve. There are places that have overcome And that. I've had students who've overcome not that. Not just some, they're overcoming it for virtually everybody. You, you can't approach it that they're, they're, the way they're performing is because of these external factors beyond your control. You, 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 you can't, you're right, you have to have never, high expectations for everyone. It should never your mind. Uh, I'm a behaviorist. You deal with the factors in your classroom. So uh, you would tell the teachers that we are doing something wrong. No, the school is not doing it. It's a system. It's not an individual. No, but it would be me if you're saying you're not, that... You're not doing wrong. You're not doing the right. So your okay. job is to improve his performance. And I try, but, okay, but those no, factors no, but do affect it. But as soon as you say but, as soon as you say but, then that means your expectation for that kid is different. It, it doesn't matter. He's, think of him as a puppy in your puppy class, okay? You don't know what his 
previous puppydom was, and it doesn't matter. We can teach any kid, anybody to do anything. Since I would rather not treat my students like dogs, as Dr. Barry suggests, I'd rather treat my dogs like students. Hey, I have my Dr. Barry treats. Okay, I'm going to train you. Sit. All the best pedagogy says to hold the treat over their nose and make them walk backwards. Sit. Samson. Sit. Mmm, delicious treat. Sit. Look. Delicious. Okay, it's time for his test. Samson. Samson. Okay, I give up. Bubble in. Come on, Samson. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ow! Ow! Oh gosh, you are evil, Luke. <laughs> Luke, sit. Sit. Sit, boy. No, down. Look. Sit. Sit, Luke. Sit. Good dog. Put your foot on the test. Take your test. Good job. Bishop, he's my AP student. Sit down, Bishop, sit. Bishop, Bishop, sit, sit. Good sit. Yes. Tweets for Bishop on test day. And this is Winston. And he is going to learn to sit. Okay, Winston. Okay, Winston. Sit. Sit. No, sit. Sit. Good sit. No, good sit. Winston. Sit. Sit, Winston. <laughs> Winston. Come here. Take your test. Take it. Take your test. Okay, let's see what kind of student you are. Cheeky. Look, I have the finest pedagogy in the world, scripted. We're not rolling over, honey. We're not rolling over. We're sitting, sit. Oh, okay, we're just gonna have her take her test. Good girl, come and take your test. Bubble it in. Come on. I will get no merit pay this year. If a kid's not motivated on what you're doing, then you find a way to provide some external motivation for it to make it meaningful that they try hard. And for example, one thing you could do is when you do these practice tests, you can say, okay, I'm gonna watch you, and those of you that try hard, you're gonna get, at the end, you'll get a, a lollipop while the others are finishing, okay? And you watch who's trying hard, and you still, you train those behaviors. There's absolutely nothing unethical inappropriate or legal I just want that. you to know I and have invested a lot of money in Smarties candy because I sure. do that <laughs> I try anything look at my fantastic array of student reinforcement according to my behaviors friends if I just give out enough of these and enough of these I'm going to get all green because I will be able to teach any student from any background whatever I want. So I am investing all of my savings in stock for this assortment of positive reinforcements. And my students are going to be all green. You just watch. They will be all green. You know, on those days where I just can't seem to reach some students. These help to keep me sane. And it makes it a little easier to deal with all the pressure that I'm experiencing. And it gives me hope for better years to come. <laughs>